Welcome. In this video series, we are going to look at the critical points or local extrema of multivariable functions. So you probably know by now one of the perhaps most powerful aspects of calculus is that we can maximize and minimize functions. So in calculus one, we learned how to find local and global maxima and minima of functions. So one of those terms, local, is often re sometimes referred to as relative and global is sometimes referred to as absolute. So if you're familiar with that terminology, uh, you can think about local and global in the same sense. Local and global kind of make a little bit more practical sense because of the fact that local means just within a small region and global means over the, the entire span of a region. So in particular, let's say we have a function f of x. A critical point is said to occur for any values of x where the first derivative equals zero. Uh, so when the first derivative equals zero, we have potential for maxima and minima. And the reason for that is because remember the derivative represents the instantaneous rate of change at a point. So at points where you have a maximum or minimum, the slope, if you were standing right here and you were observing in either of the two directions, right or left, you would be standing on an absolutely flat plateau. Uh, similarly here. Now the, the, point can represent a minimum, maximum, or neither. So for this function here, which by the way is f of x equals x cubed, if you find its first derivative and you get f prime of x equals 3x squared, and you set that equal to zero and solve for x, you find out that you get a critical point of x equals zero, but at x equals zero, that point is neither a maximum nor a minimum. It just happens to be a point where there's a flat slope. Now, fortunately for us, this doesn't happen incredibly often, but there are examples of where it does, such as with the f of x equals x cubed function. Now, when we talk about local and global, uh, this point right here is a global minimum. I'm sorry, not a global minimum, a local minimum. And the reason that's a local minimum, I'll just abbreviate that LM, local min. The reason that's local is because within the X, the domain here, which is from about just negative one and just under a half to two, the lowest point on the graph is actually here. And so we could think about that as a global min. Now there could be multiple global uh, local mins or local maxes, but there can only be one global min or global max. Now, maybe there's more than one point where the, they're, they're both equal to the same y value, but we see that this is the lowest y value you can have on this graph within this drawn region. And this is the local minimum because from, let's say, here, uh, where this guy's standing to here, there's a location in which that serves as the minimum point. And so this point here where this guy is standing, this could be thought of as the local max. And you can think about this point, since it's a little bit higher and it exists within that domain, you can think about this as the global max. Similarly here, uh, you could think of this as the lowest point. So this is a global min and this is a global max. So those are points that we often want to identify. Now, just because you find a local max, the important aspect here is that it may not be the largest maximum. And so that poses another issue of, okay, what's your domain? And within that domain, are there any points, uh, any end points within that domain? For example, at X equals negative one point something and Y equals 1.5 something or 1.75, you have to be able to look into that entire stretch. So in addition to finding these points, you also have to verify whether they're local or global. For, uh, here's, a, here's just an example that we can work through in the Calculus 1 realm to help us reflect and recall that we can do this for single variable functions. So in this case, x squared minus 8x, its first derivative is gonna be 2x minus 8. And now when we set that equal to zero, so I'm gonna put, sometimes you can write set above the equal sign to say it's not always zero, it's just we're, we're forcing it to be zero. We're looking for where is the rate of change zero. And when you solve this, add eight, divide by two, you get x equals four. Now I have no idea whether x equals four 
represents a, uh, a minimum or a maximum. And so I would now need to verify that as either a minimum or maximum. And apologies, but just for the purpose of demonstration, this should have been x cubed up here. Uh, so let's 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 work with that now. So this is going to be its derivative will be three x squared, and then we can set that equal to zero. So let's step back here for a moment. So for f prime of x equals uh, or x f of x equals x cubed minus eight x, its derivative is three x squared minus eight. And uh, so now we can set this equal to zero. So we have 3x squared minus 8 set equal to zero. Add 8 to the other side, divide by 3. We get x squared equals 8 thirds. And so x equals, in this case, plus or minus 8, the square root of 8 thirds. So we have two points. Uh, we have positive eight, square root of 8 thirds and negative square root of 8 thirds, and we just need to determine whether those two critical points represent mins or maxes. So in order to do that, and by the way, this comes out to about just 1.63. So in order to do that, we often look, like to look at the first derivative test. We say, okay, well, here are our critical points. Think of this as our x-axis, and we have one here at negative 1.63. And we have one here at positive 1.63. Now, I don't know whether this critical point is a min, a max, or neither. So the one way I can verify this is to ask myself, is the function decreasing as it approaches negative 1.63, or is it increasing? So oftentimes, we would pick a point somewhere over here. Let's say negative 2 is a nice point that's to the left of that. And my slope at x equals negative 2. It's going to be, let's see, 4, 12, minus 8 is 4. And so that means the function is increasing until it hits this point here. So I have suspicion that this is a maximum, but I would want to make sure that the function begins decreasing after that for me to be able to call it a maximum. Let's pick another point in between negative 1.63 and 1.63, because we know, after all, that in order for the function to change directions, it has to go through a slope of zero, or there has to be a discontinuity somewhere, like a vertical asymptote. But that's not relevant for a cubic function. So we don't need to worry about that, but let's pick zero. If I calculate f prime of zero, I'm going to get negative eight. And that, in fact, is a negative slope. So really, we just care about the sign here. We just want to see, is the function increasing or decreasing? So this, I can say right now, is a max. Whether it's local or global, I, I don't yet know. And in order to do that, let's figure out what happens over here at x equals 1.63. So let me kind of draw this a little bit higher. So this is decreasing. And now at 1.63, I want to know, I'm thinking it's a minimum, but let me plug in a number that's slightly to the right of 1.63. I'll pick 2 because that's a nice uh, round number f prime at 2 is going to be, again, positive 4. And that means the function begins increasing for x greater than 1.63. And so I know that here I have a min. I don't know whether that's a local or global. And the reason I don't know that is because I have to ask myself, over here at x equals negative 3, that's my boundary. And then x equals positive 4 is my boundary over here. So it's possible that back over here, this point, at x equals negative 3 may actually fall below the y value of this minimum over here. And this point at x equals positive 4, that y value right there may be higher than the y value over here. So we need to assess that. And the way we can do that is by looking at, looking at the endpoints as well. So if I look at the y values, and I calculate f of negative 3. f of negative 3 will be 9 times 3, which is 27 minus 8, uh, is going to be 19. So that's over here. I have a y value of 19. I'm going to compare that to my min, f of about 1.63. And if I plug that in for x, I will get a positive or a negative 0 0.0293. 
And since the lowest point of these two is my min over here, I can say that this is a global uh, min. Okay, now global in terms of the region over which we're we're looking, we're limited from x is negative 3 to positive 4. If we kept on going, this function would continue decreasing. And if we kept on going beyond x equals 4, this function would continue increasing. Uh, so this point here we can spot as the ordered pair 1.63 comma negative 0 0.0293. And this point over here, which is actually a lot higher, but I'm not going to draw it to scale, is negative 3 comma 19. So uh, with that said, we can now figure out whether our max is a local or global max. So I'll calculate f of negative 1.63. And the y value that we get when we do that is negative 0 0.0293 again. And I just have to ask myself, is that point higher or lower than this end point that I know is part of an increasing function? So I'll calculate f of 4. And f of 4 is going to give me 16 times 3 is 48, uh, minus 8 is 40. And so this right here, this point, falls lower than the end point. And so this point I can think of as a local max. And this is the ordered pair negative 1.63 comma negative 0 0.0293. And my end point at the right is going to be the ordered pair 4 comma 40 and that point is much higher so this will be the global max this right here is going to be the local min because that point is a minimum a smaller smaller point than the point surrounding it but it's only within that small neighborhood so this is a local min so that's how we would do a, a, an analysis in calculus one. In multivariable calculus, it's a very similar thought process. Um, you can see here, here we have a three-dimensional surface, and you can probably pretty quickly identify that there is a local max here. And once again, that represents the highest spot within this, I guess, little hill, as you want to describe it. And then this represents the highest z value that I see in the graph, and that's going to be my uh, not local, but rather global maximum. And then I can think about this point down here as, well, that's the smallest point I see uh, on this surface, so I can call that the global minimum. And you can see those points here on this contour plot. You can see where uh, here this point represents our first point that we found at z equals negative 3. That's this point down here. And then we also have the point, which is the global max, a height of 11 on that, on that scale. So there's my 11 right there. So in terms of how we find these, uh, we've got a, we have the same type of idea, but we have two slopes to account for. We have the rate of change of z with respect to x and the rate of change of z with respect to y, these two partial derivatives. The significance of having the derivative set equal to zero in calculus one was that that was the slope of the tangent line at that point. But what does the tangent plane, the tangent plane look like at a maximum or minimum? Well, as you might guess, it has a zero slope in both directions. It has a zero slope here, and it has a zero slope going back in the, in, in the other direction. And so if we think about this as df dx, that's going to be zero. And if we think about this, as df dy, that's going to be zero. And so we require that slopes in both directions be zero. So the tangent plane is a horizontal plane with zero slope in both the x and y directions. As a result, we find critical points as pairs. So different xy pairs within the xy plane, xy equals some point ab, where the partial derivative with respect to x is zero and the partial derivative with respect to y is zero. Because the gradient vector consists of the two partial derivatives, it's the same thing as saying, where is the gradient vector equal to the zero vector, which we sometimes will write as a zero with a hat over it. 
In the next video, we'll actually tackle some examples with how to use this.